My name is Michelle Kwan. I'm a coordinator of this program. You have three teachers and one undergraduate assistant. Um, Ms. Murphy will introduce herself. Hi, everybody. I am Maria Murphy. I am the teacher and your main person for today. So if Connor would like to introduce himself next. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Connor. Uh, as Maria was just saying, I'm one of your assistants. So feel free to send me a message if you've got any questions. Uh, yeah. And Alexander, off to you. Yeah. Hello. Uh, my name is Alexander Eubanks. I am yet another assistant. And so um, me and Connor and Maria, as Maria is presenting today's uh, math, if you have questions, you can directly message those questions to any one of us uh, while everyone's working and, of course, share your answers as well. So hi, everybody. Just before we go ahead and start, I'm going to ask that everybody could write in the chat. Please chat everybody, write your first name, your last name, and hi. This is a way that we're going to be able to I, just take a moment. attendance. Oh. Yeah, I have to make that public. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so uh, if you already did, uh, then could you please uh, do that again? I think uh, nobody said hi, right? Yeah. All right, and as um, Dr. Kwan was just saying, this is how we'll be taking attendance. Um, so make sure to do this at the beginning. And then at the end, when we're done, you're gonna do something similar, but that'll be at the end. Um, so please do that. Um, if everybody already typed hi, then uh, Mr. Yu Banks will start to call your name and you will introduce yourself, yes. your school and what you like. Yeah, could you please explain? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so as she said, just say, you know, um, your name, uh, what school you go to and just something you like or enjoy, just some, some fact about yourself. Okay, so let's start with Alexa H. Um, my name is Alexa, and I go to Markham Middle. I like to play piano. Very nice. Next up, we have uh, Arman Sadri. Hello, my name is Arman Sadri. I go to St. Teresa Catholic School, and I am to Galilee. Very cool. All right, next up, we have Clayton Berardi. Hey, I'm Clayton Berardi, and I like surviving out in the wilderness as a Boy Scout. <laughs> Very nice. Then we have Connor O'Reilly. I'm Connor, and I like to play the clarinet. Okay, got a lot of musicians. Uh, next up, we have uh, Effie McCoy. Hi, I'm Effie McCoy. I go to WPS, and I play volleyball. Okay. Very nice. Next up, we have uh, Ethan. Hi, my name is Ethan. I go to Sanford Middle, and I like um, programming. OK, next up, we have Hamza Ahmed. Hi, uh, my name is Hamza Ahmed. I'm from, I, I, I go to uh, Markham Woods Middle School. And, I, and my favorite sport uh, during this season is basketball. I mean, not basketball, uh, bicycle. Nice. Okay, next up we have uh, Isabella Carrion. Hi, um, my name is Isabella Carrion and um, I go to St. James Cathedral School in downtown. And my, I like to play volleyball. Very cool, very cool. Okay, next up we have, uh, oh, sorry, jumped for a second. Okay, next up we have Jacob. 
Hi, my name is Jacob Melendez. I go to Timber Springs Middle School and I like playing basketball. Okay, very cool. See, next up we have uh, Jennifer Barsoom. Hi, my name is Jennifer Barsoom. I go to Markham Woods Middle School and I like to spend time with my family. Okay, very nice. Next up we have Kay Morales. Hi, my name is Kaylani, and I go to Downey Christian School. And I'm in eighth grade. Okay, very nice. Next up, we have uh, Luke Haynes. Okay, so if you have microphone issues, that's okay. Um, if you were trying to talk just, just now. Um, at the end, if, if uh, you wanna try again, just let us know. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, no problem. He said his mic won't work. Uh, so then in that case, next up we have Madeline Park. Hi, my name is Madeline Park and I love to dance. Very nice. Next up we have Mark Sarmiento. Hello, my name is Mark. I go to Good Shepherd Catholic School and I like science. Okay, very nice. All right, so next up we have Mason Thatcher. Okay, so heard you a little bit, but was super quiet. I, I am Mason Thatcher and I like playing games. Okay, very cool. Uh, next up, we have Matthew Hackney. Uh, I'm Matthew, and I go to Windermere Prep, and I like playing golf. Okay, cool, cool. Next up, we have Maddie. Hi, I'm Matteo Vaccaro. I go to Montessori World School, and I like science. Okay, very cool. Next up, we, uh, we have Nick. Hello, my name is Nikita Shmakov, and I go to WPS. Okay, cool, cool. Next up is Rachel Schwai. Hi, um, my name is Rachel, and I go to Sanford Middle School, and I'm a swimmer. Very cool. Next up, we have Samuel Arboleda Martinez. Hello, my name is Samuel Arboleda Martinez, and I go to St. James Cathedral School, and I like um, drawing. Okay, cool, cool. All right, next up we have Shirley Donoso. My name is um, Joshua Donoso. I'm from Imagine School Town Center. I like video games. My name is Jasper Donoso. I'm also go to Imagine School Town Center and I like books. Okay, very cool. Let's see here. Um, next up is Terry Zetto. Um, I go to Winger Prep and I like soccer and video games. Very cool. Next up, we have um, Tarun Izil Shandra Mohan. Did my best. Hi, my name is Tarun, and um, I go to Markham Woods Middle School, and I like to play jump. Cool beans. All right. Uh, then we have, it just says the Warners. So if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Kale Warner, and I go to Family Christian School, and I like doing Taekwondo and rowing. OK. Unique, very nice. Next up, we have uh, Zakiria Hassan. Is that right? Well, I'm Zach, and I go to Markham Woods Middle School, and I like basketball. Very nice. And last but not uh, least, oh, it wiggled for a second. CL Zam. <laughs> um. Okay, so if, if your mic doesn't work and you want to try again later, just let us know. But um, pending anyone who, if anyone got skipped, now's a good time to let me know. Otherwise, I believe, oh, yes, Erica Kim. 
Um, my name's Erica Kim. I go to Florida Virtual School and I like to read books. Okay, very nice. And then uh, Luke Haynes says that he'd like to try again. Says Mike didn't work before, so go ahead. Okay, um, how my name's Luke Haynes. I go to Markham Woods Middle School and I like to play football and video games. Very nice. Okay, um, once again, if anyone didn't have a chance to introduce themselves, just go ahead and unmute yourself and do so. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for the introductions. Unfortunately, I didn't see anyone say they like math. <laughs> right, this is math circle. How many of you are fans of math? It's okay. I do. All right, you do, awesome. I like science too, but come on math, right? That's why we're here. All right, so why don't we go ahead and begin then. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So today, what we're going to be talking about is palindromic numbers, triangular numbers, and prime numbers. At any point during this entire session, if you guys have questions or if you would like me to slow down or anything like that, just please go ahead and, you know, chat us, let us know, and we're always here to help you. So the first thing we want to do is figure out what is a palindrome. How many of you have never heard of a palindrome? Me? Okay. So all that a palindrome is, is just a word or a phrase that reads the same forwards as it does backwards. So some examples could be like, Madam, Hannah, go dog. Because go dog is the same thing as the reverse, which is the same as go dog. Does anyone know what a palindromic number is? Race car is one, yeah. Taco cat is another, right? Does anyone know what a palindromic number is? All right, so it's definitely a number that can read the same forwards as it does backwards. So when we talk about palindromic numbers, now that's just a number again that we read forwards and backwards. And some examples, as you guys already gave given me in the chat, are 1331, 404, 9, 7777, 1456866541, and so forth. Just so you know, when we do ask questions here, we do want you to think about trying to answer the questions to the best of your knowledge. If you have questions, um, please save them until everybody has thought through the question first. So how many one digit palindromic numbers are there? Give you guys just a minute for other students to answer. So the question is how many one digit palindromic numbers are there? Now keep in mind the hint here is one digit. So would anyone like to volunteer to unmute themselves and, and give their answer? Oh, yes. So um, because I spotted you first, Mark, you can go ahead. But uh, for everyone else from here on out, um, use the little like raise your hand feature on the participants thing, because that way it pops up immediately. So yeah, go ahead, Mark Sarmiento.
90 numbers and two digits. But how many one digit? Right, because that's what the, we're asking here is how many one digit palindromic numbers are there? Okay, so it looks, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the Warners since he had the hand up. Hmm, go ahead. Would there be no one digit palindromic numbers? So that's a reasonable answer. Can you can you tell me why you are saying there's none? Because it is actually a reasonable answer. So I would say that because they have to be the same forwards and backwards. If you have a one digit number, you can't really flip it because it's just one digit. Let's say you have the number one. You did just flip it around and it looks like a backwards one. If you have the letter uh, two and two, you flip it around and you have two and two. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and let Miss Murphy clarify that because there's a little bit of a misunderstanding there. That was very good reasoning and you're right and you're thinking about visual symmetry, but take it away, Maria. If we go back to the definition of a palindromic number, remember that it has to read the same forward as it does backwards, right? So if you had the digit one, well, if you were to reverse it, you still have the digit one, right? So it's the same forwards as it is backwards. Because we're not mirroring it, right? We're not taking that symbol and flipping the symbol around. We're simply taking however many symbols we have and writing them in reverse. So with a two digit number like um, 22, I don't take the twos and mirror them. I just write two, two. And if I write it the other way, it's two, two. Right, so that was a good misunderstanding because that's something to be very clear on. We're not mirroring the symbols, just the order in which the letters are written down or the symbols are written down. Okay, and I noticed Tarun has uh, his hand raised. If there was something you wanted to comment or add. Um, I think there's only one digit palindromic number that you can use. I think it is eight, since it can be written backwards. So you're. Yeah, that's good. So you're still thinking about taking the symbol and mirroring it like that. So Maria, how about go ahead and write down the nine one digit palind nine, ten <laughs> one digit palindromic numbers and let's take a look at them. All right. So if we were to list them down, we have zero because zero read, read forward is zero and then backwards is zero. We have one. What else do we have? two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So in total, how many digits do we have? Go ahead, Armand. Nine digits total. Are, Are you counting? Sure? Yes, or no, 10 digits, sorry. Right, you have to include, make sure that you include zero in that, yeah. So here we have one digit numbers, which is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which if you took each of these and you reversed them, they're the same number, right? Now, um, Tharun, I think you mentioned this about the eight. Now you mentioned that the eight itself is a palindrome number. It is a palindrome number and it is a palindrome because if you were to take, let's go back to, if we were to look about palindromes in general, if you were to look at the same thing forward and backwards, it is the same, right? So this picture mirrors itself in a way. So it is a good observation that you notice that the eight, if you split in half, could be the same forward and backwards but we're looking at the way we're reading the numbers. Question. Oh, go ahead. So, so like, and so after after all these palindromic numbers, there's there's like no more, there's like, I mean, 11 could be a palindromic number because if you, if you like switch the order of 11, it would still be 11. Right. Perfect. So question, how many digits is 11? Two of those, so that would be a two digit palindromic. There you right. go, yes, very good. So a lot of math actually is a lot of English too. So you actually have to understand the question before you can actually answer the question. 
So you have to make sure you're reading carefully what it is that you're being asked. And I'm sure you guys get it a lot in your exams too. You get what uh, question and you're reading it four different ways and you have to figure out what that answer is, right? So, you know, a lot of it is also just taking piece of your, pieces of your question, really just trying to understand what it is asking. Maria, I've got a question a student has that might interest the whole class. How about negative numbers? Well, let's say we have a negative eight, right? If I was to read it from left to right, I see negative eight. If I read it from right to left, I see eight minus. So that wouldn't be palindromic because the negative is not on the other side, right? And this one is actually, it would probably depend what book you're reading, right? Because I'm with Maria on this, the negative sign is its own symbol, right? It's not attached to the eight, so it gets flipped. But you could also argue, but we're talking about the one number minus eight. So this was an interesting question, but we're basically going to disregard negative numbers for the rest of the presentation because of this issue. We're only going to consider positive numbers for this reason. Does anyone have any other questions before we move forward? See, so there's nine one digit palindromic numbers, and that means there's nine two digit palindromic numbers as well. Just saying. Well, let's check, but also be careful. There's nine of these. Yeah, I feel like any nine. And then, oh, and if you want to include like 111 and 222, 333, 444, like if you want to include those yeah. as well, yeah, you can. So perhaps we'll get there, but for the one <laughs> palindromic numbers, notice again, because of the number zero, there are, there are actually 10 numbers listed here, right? So we have to be careful moving forward as well when we have numbers like 10, right? Where there's a zero at the end, we're gonna we're gonna look into that moving forward. Okay. All right. So another little uh, question that we have, and I have lots of these fun little questions just to you know get the brain going. Which of the following are palindromes? Armand, if you have your answer, just hang on for other people to go ahead and read the question and answers. Okay. And I think we'll go, we'll take just rather than uh, whoever gets called on, don't say all of them, just do like, we'll go do A and then B and we'll have people say, yes, it is, or no, it isn't. Okay, and so. go ahead and chat down uh, your answer just on the chat so that we know who is getting what. And you can directly message me, Maria or Connor. Yeah. And it's okay if there's more than one answer. Oh, can we un un can we unmute and see? Can we like unmute and see which one is palindrome? Just just wait just a few seconds longer. Oh. Yeah, we're still getting some answers from everybody, so let's try to get everybody to answer first. And the question is asking which of the following are palindromes. Okay. Someone asked if they can go get their charger. Yes, of course. If for whatever reason you need to go grab something for a second, that's okay. Um, let's, let's grab people who haven't spoken yet. So um, Jennifer, if you'd like to tell us whether A is a palindrome or not. Yes, A is a palindrome. Okay. Is there um, a way that you were able to check it aside from just kind of staring at it? <laughs> Any sort of technique? Um, well, I noticed like um, they're spelled like with the same common letters and Hannah is also by itself a palindrome. So that kind of helped me um, to see that banana too would be a palindrome. All right. Very good. So if the P if each of the pieces is a palindrome, then the whole thing might be is what you're getting at. That's very good. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Samuel, would you like to tell us whether B is a palindrome or not? Um, no, it isn't. Um, because just by looking at the three, um, it isn't a repeated again on the other side. Very good. And that language you just used of on the other side, that's something to pay careful attention to moving forward. Okay. Uh, Clayton, would you like to tell us whether C is a palindrome or not? C is not a palindrome. Okay. Well, what, where did it break? 
So you can see A, B, C, D, E, um, which is basically just like your alphabet. And then if you go from your other side, it's A, B, C, E. They don't have a D on the other side. So you can draw your line of symmetry. Very good. And another way to say that is that if you come, if you read it from one direction and then from the other direction, there shouldn't be any point at which it changed, right? So notice every single one of these, we've got some different techniques coming up that you can use. Uh, let's see, uh, go ahead and the Warners, tell us for D, is that a palindrome or not? D would be a palindrome because you have one seven and then repeat flip backwards seven one. Perfect, because of the way you said it too. So we've hit four different ways to check if something is a palindrome, right? Because on this one, it you went to the middle and then you just started doing the same thing you read before to get to the middle to go back. So I'll, I'll let Maria emphasize this, but notice every single one of these had a slightly different way to check if it was a palindrome. It wasn't just stare at it and tell. You can, we probably can stare at it and tell, but there's techniques <laughs> we can get from this. And that's the good thing about math, right? There's sometimes more than one way to actually solve or figure out a problem. So I can definitely see where you're going. You're going one seven and then going reverse to one seven. And you know, that is half and it's correct, right? Another thing to notice is that your first digit and your last digit are the same, just as your second and your third digit is the same. So this is another way to map it. So in Hannah, we can say H and H is the same. A and A is the same. N and N is the same, right? So read in reverse, we know that it's H, A, N, N, A, H. But if you were reading halfway through, you know H, A, N is the same as the first H, A, N. Does anyone else have any questions about any of these problems? Now, what if you have like a repeating decimal, you know, like, like a, a repeating decimal, that would also be considered like a palindrome, like, well, that depends on the decimal, right? Uh, 4. And 4.6, uh, you know, like, no, 6 point, like 6 point, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, well, like if you have 0. 0.39, right? 39. If you were to read that reverse, that's 93. That's not the same, right? And you bring up a good point because, um, so, um, was actually in the chat talking about this. And so an example of a decimal that could be considered a palindromic number would be 123.321, because then the decimal itself is right in the middle. Or is it? Because some of you might know that if you have a decimal number, technically it would go 0 0.321, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and those zeros aren't on the front. Right. And so that's an excellent question, which again, we're just going to totally dodge. Right. We're not going to be considering decimal palindromes today. But the question of whether or not you can have decimals as palindromes, if you can make it work and you define it and you're very explicit about how you're writing decimal numbers, you can. A lot of this is about definitions. And someone in chat is mentioning, well, you could put zeros on the other side in front of the number. Yes, you could, but we normally don't. Right. So a lot of it is. If you can define it and it makes sense, it's valid. It depends on what book you're reading. Very good. Okay. So here we're gonna actually go a little further and test those brains of yours, right? So how many of you like to critically think about a problem, right? A couple of you, right? So here we have a number 18. Now we know that 18 is not a palindromic number at all, right? Because one A is not the same as eight one. But can we find a palindromic number from this number 18? Take a second, all of you, to see if you can go ahead and find out a way to make a palindromic number. Mm, make sure to see. chat your answers. Let's not give any answers until everybody's had a chance to read and try it out.
Okay, we're gonna wait just a little bit longer, but I will say getting a lot of chat messages and what's um, really cool about this is a lot of them are very different and all of them are correct because make is a very ambiguous word. Think it's good to call on some, Maria? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, Matthew, because I don't think you've had a chance to talk yet today. Go ahead and share your way of making a palindromic number here. Um, couldn't you subtract seven from eighteen and make it eleven? Since eleven is a palindromic number. Cool. All right, you could yeah. do that. Uh, another person actually said take 18 divided by 2, right? You get 9, which is also a one-digit palindromic number. Mm -hmm. So that's one way of interpreting make is do some math to it to force it into a palindromic number. So that's cool. You might find very interesting some of the other uh, things. For example, uh, Armand, would you like to share what you did to make a palindromic number? Um, there are actually multiple ways of making a palindromic number by actually, you know, solving it, which is one thing Matthew did. What I did is that I made it uh, numerical by uh, using 18 forwards and reversing it backwards to 1881. Uh, so it will be 18 and then 81. Yes. Fair. Right. A lot of really good answers, actually. And that's what I kind of actually thought of, so like 1881. You can reverse that as 18 and then 8.1. So, and uh, let me make sure this was who I thought it was. Someone had uh, yet another different one. Um, so, Jennifer, if you'd like, Barsoom, if you'd like to share. Um, so, um, I I did it like the last activity we just did, um, which I took the first two numbers and then I switched them, and um, I ma made it like the, um, um, a half circle shape to make sure that it was a palindromic, which is get the two ones and then the two eights, and then maybe add a number in between them. Cool. So yeah. So in the chat, you actually put uh, eighteen seven eight one. Right, so you could put anything you want in the middle there, as long as it was palindromic. A one-digit number is palindromic, so that that that's an option that you could do. Um, yeah, and there were several several more. Um, the Warners, if you want to go ahead and comment on something, and then I think let Maria go from there. Oh. No. Okay. <laughs> What I did was I did 18 times a third, and that made it a sixth, and six is a palindromic number. OK, mm -hmm. so more the, the math from before, like do something to it to make it into a palindrome. Cool. Yeah, definitely using operations, addition, subtraction, uh, division, multiplication can definitely give you a, pal a palindromic number, right? What if we added, though, the reverse? So instead of going 18, we add 81, right? And that's going to give me Karma? 99. 99, right? So by just adding the reversed uh, number of 18, which is 81, we get 99, right? And this is definitely uh, one of the methods that I like to use for finding a palindromic number. I can see now that there are many different ways that I didn't even think about for this problem, so. So if you wanted to add a palindromic number, you can, like, if you wanted to, like, add a non-palindromic number to another non-palindromic number, then you would get a palindromic number. So Not is that the always case, the case. Not always. Not always, no. So, like, let's get an example here. What if we had 886? Right, if we added the reverse here, which is, you know, 688, then we're gonna get a number of 1574, 
that's not palindromic, right? But if we took 1574 and we keep adding it to you know the reverse, which in this case is going to be 4751, right? And in this case, we're going to get also not a palindromic number, 63215, 25, sorry. Right? If we kept going with this process, eventually we actually will get a palindromic number. So it definitely doesn't help as a rule for all numbers, right? But it's definitely neat to see that you can keep adding palindromic numbers and then maybe eventually you get one. So here again, six, three, two, five, and this is gonna be a long problem, okay? <laughs> so that plus, my five, two, three, six. That's going to give me one, one, five, six, one. I know I'm writing a little too small and large, but one, one, five, six, one plus my one, six, five, one, one. And again, I'm just going to keep going the process. And see, let's see if we get one, right? So that's going to get me 28072. So still not palindromic. So we're going to keep going, right? So here we'll go ahead and do 28072 plus 27082. I get five, five, one, five, four. Yeah. So it's a, I think it's a very, it's so like, if you really want to make it palindromic, it's gonna be a very, very, very long process in order to, in order for you to get the palindromic number you want. So if you, like- It if you can just, for some numbers, like our numbers, 18, like, that was number, faster, right? But this number seems very long. So there's basically like chances of getting a palindromic number. Yeah, I actually found it. It's after like a hundred, it's like so long, but the palindromic number is um, 1,136,311. Does everybody else get the same thing? Yes. All right, so I keep going zero, zero, 00309. And then eventually, I'm going to have a number that's going to go one, zero, zero, three, three, one, zero. I'm going to add the this. The next one will be the palindrome. But what's the number I'm going to write? Do I put zero first? No, you go, what? No, you don't put zero first. You just put one, three, three, zero, zero, one, because the zero is just a placeholder. Right. But they're essentially throwaway zeros. You can so put my answer zeros before one, it'll still be one. Unless you have a decimal. Yeah, but we're talking about in the hole, um, where it's not a placeholder. Whoops. Can't believe I did that. <laughs> Does anyone know how to undo that? Yeah, no, uh, there'll be a little technician. undo button on your PowerPoint thing. Seems like a pretty, um, uh, yeah. You could control Z. It's like a pretty like complicated process to like to like find a palindromic number. And once you get it, it's kind of a big palindromic number you're gonna come up with. So one thing um you mentioned it being complicated. Is it complicated? Because because think of what complicated means, right? The, I said it could be could be complicated. Well, no, no, no. Is the process complicated? Think about how you would describe what you're doing. Take a number, reverse it, add them together. Keep doing that until it's palindromic. So I wouldn't say that's complicated. I would say that it can become very long, right? And you might have to do it a bunch and it might take a while and it could be tedious, but complicated, not really, right? It's very simple to describe what we're doing. Time consuming, someone said, yes. Yeah, time consuming for sure. You have to make sure that you're also double checking all your digits to make sure they're correct. 
Because yeah. one mistake can throw you off for the whole problem and make it even longer than it should. I know Samuel has his hand raised. Oh, oh Samuel, you're still muted. Okay, let us, let us know if you got skipped, but Mark, if you had a comment. Can you also multiply it to get your answer? That's a good question, Maria. You could definitely uh, manipulate the number, uh, multiplication, division, subtraction, um, addition, and many different other ways that you can do uh, to make this number a palindromic number, right? Question. So palindromic numbers, is, is this like, well, like what, what concept, like in what grade is this concept? Like, is this an eighth grade concept or is this like a high school concept? Oh, no, not really high school. Maybe like, maybe like an eighth grade concept. You, you it's mixed, right? Seventh, eighth mixed. grade up to college. You know, everything in mathematics builds on each other, right? So when you talk about algebra two plus two or three plus three, which you've seen you know, you might think it's really basic right now, but it comes back. You know, in finance, you're going to see a lot of the math problems that you've used to work on are just being built on. So I like to think that math is a subject for everybody. You know, you need to learn the basics before you can get to the advanced parts. Math is actually everywhere. You can find it in uh, social studies, like latitude and longitude. Mm -hmm. You can find it in science. You can find it anywhere Chemistry. almost. And yeah. science, especially chemistry, because you're dealing with the equations in order to come out with the resulting, with the resulting uh, solution, you know? Right. Or and that's physics, because it's like the science and math at a child, it's physics. Like, like E equals MC squared, that's an equation with a bunch of variables. Right. So math is definitely seen everywhere. You can, you know, when you get older, or you probably see your parents even do it, you know, math is taxes and home bills and groceries and how much, you know, they can save. Engineering, science, you know, it took math to build your calculator just so you can use your calculator to solve for math. Like engineering yeah. is like, uh, what do you call it? Like you have to use calculus. It's like the hardest math from older people. For, All right. Yeah. So... You know, we're, we, we, we will want to move on, but I, I would like to jump in here and notice the things that everyone mentioned. They're very true. Yeah, math is everywhere. And then we say that, and then we say it's in engineering, it's in science. So I kind of want to uh, get grab the attention of those of you who prefer art, dancing, music, literature, okay? Math is in there too, if you want it to be. And some of you may say, well, no one wants it to be. Yes, they do. Um, if any of you like poetry, the beatniks, a lot of the avant-garde poets back in the day were obsessed with coming up with the most bizarre meters they possibly could for syllables based on random sequences of numbers. Salvador Dali, the painter who did the uh, melting clocks, some of you may have seen his work before, he was absolutely obsessed with logarithms and logarithmic spirals. And that's something that you'll see in uh, AP calculus in high school at some point. And um, if, if you look for it, it's there. And so I just want to kind of bring the, it to those of you who are more on the artistic side, me too. And I'm a graduate student in mathematics. And while science is great and I have nothing against it, it's in art too. Math, math really is everywhere. And so, yeah, if you're curious about it, feel free to ask later on. Salvador Dali is actually uh, from Spain, fun fact. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. So what type of uh, math do you specialize in, uh, Mr. Eubanks? Let's go on and I will answer that at the end, okay? Any okay. questions you guys have, we'll gladly answer at the end of the session. We have plenty of time to answer all of those questions and even talk more about it. So here, I actually wanna jump into another example and I would like you guys to use the trick that I did for example one and two to try to find a palindromic number from 3,742. And let me know how many times you have to do it just to find that palindromic number. Also, not to scare anyone, remember this is for fun. There's no grade, there's no testing. 
Um, I believe that this time we'll call on someone regardless of whether you've raised your hand. So, so I'm going to look for someone who hasn't said anything yet. And I'm going to call on you. Now, if you don't know the answer, that's okay. That's fine. But I'm going to be trying to pull everyone in. So someone who has not yet raised their hand or said anything, I'm going to be looking, looking for one of you guys. <laughs> try to use my uh, method that I went over in the first two examples. Because there's a hundred or more than a hundred different ways you can rewrite this number. So let's try to use the same method this time. I got it. Okay, make sure you chat either me, Alex, or Connor, just so we can have an, an idea of what your answer is. Okay, so once I've gotten like the answer for this, then I, then I just add it to the, then I add it to the reverse of that, of, of the num of the answer to this. Right, up question. until you get to a palindromic number, right. So I've seen some people get the same correct answer and then they say, some say three times and some say four times. So which one is it? How many times do you have to uh, add? Okay. All right. So like I said, let me call on someone who has not raised their hand, who hasn't had an opportunity to speak yet. So let's do Rachel Schwey. Okay, so the palindromic number is 25,642, and you have to do it three times. Okay. Does okay. anyone disagree with that or agree with that? Well, I kind of got a different number because like, okay, so so like what I did was like first uh, three, uh, three, 3,742 plus 2,743 equals 2,215 plus 5,126 equals 11,341. Plus 1, 000, uh, 14,311 gives me 25,652. And then if you want to reverse that, it would be 25652, just like 25652. Yeah. All right. So I'm just writing down exactly what you said. All right. So here, what we did, we took 3,742 and we added it by the reverse, which is 2473. We got 6,215. Now we went ahead and took the 6,215 and add that by its reverse. So that's 5126, which is going to give me 11,341. And now when I take 11,341, I'm going to go ahead and add that to 14,311, which is going to give me 256. Five, two, which you can read it reversed, which is the same number. Does anyone have any other questions? How was that? Fun? Well, yeah, I mean, this, much this easier. is like, this much is easier. Like fun. Okay. This is actually fun in, in a way. So it's like a fun you're way. Doing it, it's like you're adding, and then you're adding is reverse, and you get the answer at its reverse. You get its right. answer and it's reverse yeah. until you get the palindromic number that you want. Yeah. Another thing I want I think to it's about. just the oh, numbers go ahead. that are like confusing. Like the numbers, like they just look very confusing because there's like a lot of them, but it's uh, much easier when you know that what you're adding. Yes, that's a good point. Yeah, it's very easy to get overwhelmed by, and this happens to even, you know, graduate level math students. This happens of like, 
you walk into a room and there's a board and it's like, oh my goodness, so many numbers and symbols and squiggles and ah, but when you slow down or you are the one writing that, it's not so overwhelming, right? So that's natural, that sort of response of just ah, numbers everywhere. Another thing I just wanted to comment on is that there were several like in the chat as well, there were some answers that they had, it took them three steps and they got a palindrome, but they were off a bit. Like it was two, five, eight, five, two, or something like that. The, a lot of times when that happens, um, the student who got something like that may feel, you may feel like, oof, I got it wrong. Not in a meaningful way, you didn't get it wrong because you did the process correctly and you still did the right number of steps. And so in the grand scheme of things, you're going to learn that little errors like that don't really matter that much. Math is about steps, not numbers. And yes, Jennifer's asking if she can ask a question. Go ahead. Could you also subtract using um, the method that we just did? That is a good question, Maria. I haven't tried for this problem, but if you can find one, I'd love to see it at the end. I would say I that one is something, because we want to do the process over and over and over again, with negative numbers, you might start going positive, negative, positive, negative, right? So you, in order for it to count, you probably just have to ignore the minus sign and just count it. Like I'm gonna count negative 121 as palindromic. I'm not gonna worry about the minus sign, but that's something that all of you should try. Play around with these ideas, right? That's a great question. And the response to those questions that pop in your head is, let me go find out right now. I mean, technically any process would work because there's an infinite amount of numbers. So no matter what you do, you'll eventually get to a palindrome. It might be like, a really exceedingly long time, but you could reach it. So that is a very good observation. And there's one key thing I'll point out. Um, you should see if you can find a counterexample, because what you said is there's an infinite number of palindromes. So eventually, if I do the process, I have to hit one of those eventually, right? But actually, aren't there also an infinite number of numbers that aren't palindromes? Well, yes and no. Infin infinity isn't really a number, it's more of a concept, um, and it's really complicated, but um, eventually it could take you longer than it takes the universe to exist, but you'll eventually, probability states, eventually you'll be able to receive one of those. Okay, okay. The uh, probability I would... would be like one yep. over like, if it, the probability would be like, like so unimaginably small, but you will you will get there at some point as long as the universe is, is still existing when you're when you're like doing it all. So here's what I'll I say. I mean, who knows? Maybe you'll be like um, sorry some to sort of mathematician calculator in heaven. I'm gonna so stop. I'm gonna stop you guys because yes. we could talk about this for a while now. But yeah. let's go ahead and try actually some different examples, okay? So talk about at the end, if you want, I'd love to talk to you guys all at the end about all these different things, okay? But we're going to try to go, move a little forward because some people want to learn even more. So let's go forward. Now, here's a question. What is the smallest three-digit palindromic number? Or well, three minus. Is this? Yeah. Three digits. So that's three digit as you write it in English. There's a couple raised hands. Maybe I'll call on Clayton. So it really depends if you count zero as a digit. Um, if you didn't, it would be 101. If you did, it would be zero, 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 or zero, one, zero. So when you want to count zero as a digit, especially when you're reading it from forward, backwards, right? Forward so and reverse. So it would be zero, 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 or just zero. Well, if we think about just the smallest three digit number, we have 100, right? So 100 in reverse is just 0, 0, 001 or just one. So that's not the same as 100. Yeah, but um, if you count um, like just zeros as in like zero as itself as a digit, then just 0, 0, 0 would be a three digit number. But if you don't, then it would be 101. That's a good point. Um, the way we are using the word digit here, so when you say, do you count zero as a digit? Yes. Does that mean that zero equals zero, zero, zero? No. So you're, that's not how the word digit is used. Digit, counting it as a digit means I can use it 
in a place for a standard way to write down a number. So we are going to count zero as a digit. So 101 works as a palindromic number. We're not going to allow ourselves to put leading zeros in front of things. That's what you're referring to. That's not counting zero as a digit. That's using z leading zeros, which we're not going to do. But that's a good point. Okay. All right, another one. Let's see if you guys can understand this question. So what is a palindrop in number whose product of two digits is 49? So here we're going to think about more than one thing than just palindromic, right? We're going to think about the product and we're going to think of two digit numbers. Two single digit numbers, sorry. Or two numbers itself. I mean, and you're, well, maybe like seven times seven is that would be 49 and seven is palindromic so right so seven times seven we know is going to give us 49 and yes so the digit itself seven and seven is palindromic anyone had any questions i know a couple hands are raised samuel i don't know if you've been able to use your microphone but yeah um for the last one that we just did, you said that which one was like the lowest um, digit of zero or three? The smallest three digit. Yeah, wouldn't it be negative three because right next to the three, there's like the minus sign? No, you. Uh, then minus is not a minus. In English, oh. sometimes when we write words, there's hyphens. Oh, okay. So when we say three digit, sometimes there's a hyphen in between that. Yeah, so I think there's also hyphens in um, some English words. I don't, I can't come up with one right now, but it's just how we write. So I'd like to ask everyone th this question. Um, notice the word the, what is the palindromic number whose product of two digits is 49? We take a minute to think about how we know that this answer 77 is the only one. Maybe there's some other palindromic number whose product of two digits is 49. Why can that be true or not be true? Think about it for a second. Yeah. Let's, see, let's give everyone just a minute to think about it. And I'll let Maria decide when to <laughs> ask someone. Matthew, you, if you want, you can answer. Oh, because those are, those are the only two numbers that will have this like a palindromic number because even if you found another answer to well another two other numbers for for the product of 49 it would um you still wouldn't be able to do that because it would have to kind of be like doubles Right. So, and a lot of what you're saying also is just keeping in mind what the factors are, right? So the numbers who products can give you 49. So you have to think about numbers that multiply into 49. So if you were to list out the factors, you have one, seven, and 49, right? The product of one and 49 is just going to be 49. That number is not palindromic, right? But we do know that seven times itself is 49 and 77 seven is palindromic, right? I know there's two hands raised. So Samuel, if you wanna take this one and then we'll ask somebody different next time. Um, so could you do um, for, 49 divided by 7, so 2, because 2 is a palindromic number. That's division. We're thinking of product, though. Oh, right. But also, 49 divided by 7 doesn't equal 2. Careful. Right as well. <laughs> but I know where you're getting that 2 from. Different 2, yeah. All right. So I know there's a couple of questions, but if you guys want to go ahead and use the chat, go ahead and talk to either Alex or Connor. 
you have questions, you can go ahead and do that also as we move forward. So, so the next thing we wanted to go ahead and do is talk about how we're finding palindromic numbers, right? So there's, of course, as we already discussed, a couple of different ways to find palindromic numbers. Now, one way to find palindromic numbers follows these kind of rules right here. So first you'll pick any number, you'll reverse the digits of that number. You can add these two numbers together. So as we were doing in our previous example, taking our number and adding it to its reversed. And then we could repeat that continuously until we get a palindrome. And this is just one way in which we're finding palindromic numbers, right? So using that method, how will we use the number 37 to find a palindromic number? Make sure to write your answers down in the chats. So if I have 37, right, and as the rules say, I pick a number, my number is 37, right? I'm gonna reverse the digits, so that number is? Anyone? 73. 73. I'm gonna add those two numbers together, so I'll have 37 plus 73. What's the number I get? 110. 110. Reversed uh, is going to give me? 011. 011 or? 11. 11. So is that palindromic? No. Okay. So here, I'll go ahead and do one step more, right? 110. And we're supposed to repeat until we get a palindromic number, right? Plus 11. Yeah which is gonna give me 121. Is that palindromic? Yes. Yes. And we're done. Don't have to do any more. How many of you like this way? Yeah, a couple of you? Well, yeah, that was kind of like, kind of like the same way because I mean, you're, you're again, adding like, adding like the reverse. Right. 7,300 Zero. All right, so let's take everything we've known so far, and we're actually going to go ahead and do what I like to call a little bit of word problems, right? So here, 2002 was the last palindromic year, right? What will be the next palindromic year? Keep in mind the next word is next. So what is the next palindromic here? And is there an easy way to go ahead and do this? And I'll go back uh, aside in a minute, Jennifer. I got a couple, uh -huh. ooh, very quick. I got a couple chat questions. I'm not gonna give them away. But again, as Maria just emphasized next, um, not just what is a palindromic year in the future, but what's the next one? The first one we'll hit as time goes forward after this. And I'm going back just for somebody who asked me to go back to a slide, but think about your answer here. So 2002 is a palindromic year because 2002 is the same thing read reversed. What is the next one? I believe, uh, Zachariah, you haven't had a chance to share anything yet. So if you'd like to go ahead and share. I think the next panodromic year would be 300, 303. So 3003, you mean? Yeah, 3000, yeah. Okay. It's actually one a little bit um, sooner, closer to 2002. That is a palindromic year, but 
There's one that happens before that. What's the next one? Mm -hmm. Maria, I'll let you choose who goes next. Uh, Samantha, you want to go? Um, the next year will be 2,112. Right. So that is a good answer, 2,112. So one of the key things, keep in mind, um, when we're dealing with palindromic numbers, we know that the number has to be the read the same, left to right and right to left. So if these two digits, two and two are, have to be the same, then these two digits right here also have to be the same. So we can think of the smallest two digit palindrome number that goes after zero, right? Which is gonna be the smallest two digit palindrome number, which is 11. I kind of noticed something in here. You see like there's actually two palindromic numbers in this one palindromic number. You see a, a two and a two and one and a one, 22, 11. Right. So you see two palindromic numbers in this so two palindromic numbers make a palindromic number. Is that always the case? Right. Yes. Um, because so, by what you're seeing, you're saying is it always the case? It actually will be. Um, now, don't don't answer this. I just want to throw this out to think about. Is that ha, does that have anything to do with the fact these are numbers, or would this be true for words or other things as well? This this way that you're seeing of building these. I think more of, more of words, maybe. Okay, I'll let you guys think about that. All right. Next question. How many seven digit palindromic numbers are there? So before we were dealing with one digit, two digit, even three digits. Now let's branch out to seven digits. And take a second to think about this, okay? If you have an answer, make sure you're chatting. Uh, let us know what the answer is so that we can have just kind of an idea of where you guys are with the problem. I actually want to call on someone a little bit different. So Jacob. I don't know if you've uh, spoke today, but do you want to maybe give me your answer? So I got 9,000 because basically the first four digits have can be could be any number, but the last three digits have to be that number that the first three digits are. So for the first four digits, for the first one, there can only be nine choices for it. But then for the next three, there could be 10 choices because you can choose zero for those three. But for the first one, you can't choose zero because then it'll only be six digits. So then when you multiply nine times 10 times 10 times 10, that's 9,000, which is my answer. Definitely a good answer, yeah. Here, so here we have seven digits, right? So the first digit, and these are just uh, placements, not numbers or digits, just second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh. As you were saying, Jacob, which I love your answer, by the way, your first number, that's going to have nine possible, you know, digits, right? Because we're not including zero, so we're excluding zero. But because 
one, the first digit and last digit have to be the same, there's only one possibility for the seventh di digit, right? Same again here, but in the second digit, there's 10 options because we can include zero. And since six, the sixth digit has to be also the same, that's only one option. And for the third digit, there could be 10 different options. And since the fifth has to be the same as that, there can only be one option for the fifth digit, right? And then for the fourth digit, there could be 10 options, right? Does that make sense to everybody or does anyone have any questions about that? So I'd like to ask, because I know Clayton, you actually had a different one. So if you'd like to explain your thinking and ask questions about this thinking, please go ahead now. All right. So um, there are 668 seven digit palindromic numbers. There are a couple ways you can figure this out. Um, along with, um, I believe it was, I forget um, their name, but that is one way to figure it out. However, um, there are also various um, algorithms in number theory that you can use. Um, like it has to deal with weird exponential properties. But um, another one is that um, you see for your one digit, there are 10 different options. Now for your two digit, there, there are nine and it keeps decreasing exponentially. Now you um, eventually end up adding all these together to get your 668. Okay, so it sounds like you have some cool theories and formulas there, but you're counting something else than what the question asked you to count because the description you gave for the first place having 10 digits, no, as per as per the first or nine, sorry. Yeah, so it has because zero can't be perfect. But then when you get to the next one, it doesn't decrease. It actually goes up to 10 because there's 10 choices, right? So I think you're counting something else, something like how many different, uh, how many words are there with seven different letters or digits, right? Where the digits are different or something like that. And I think that's what's going on there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, okay. Does anyone else want to add something different, ask for clarifications, et cetera? I want to add something. I think it's 668 seven digit numbers. But why? Explain your reason. Because there's There's a lot to explain with it, so it's like it's hard to explain. Okay, so that's what, if you want to sit on it a bit, we can even chat afterwards. Maria is about to go through why it is actually 9,000, right? So, so let's let Maria take it away and she's going to go through this slide here. So as um, we spoke about with Jacob, Jacob had the right idea. So it's all about how, the possibilities. So for the first digit, there was nine possibilities because you can't have zero as your first digit, right? So here for the second digit, you have 10 options or 10 possibilities, 10 digits that it could be. And when you take these numbers, taking them into account, when you multiply them, you're going to get 9,000. And as, as we were saying, just, you know, there are nine possible options for the first digit. You have to exclude zero because you can't have your number, your seven digit number start with zero, right? And since we're looking for palindromic numbers, the last digit has to be the same as your first digit. So there's only one possible option for the last digit. When we talk about the second and the third digit and even um, second and third digit, right? Same idea. So if the second digit has to be the same as my sixth digit, and if my third digit has to be the same as my fifth digit, then there's 10 options for the second and the third digit, but there can only be one for the sixth and the fifth. And then finally, on my fourth digit, since it's right there in the middle, it doesn't matter what number that is. So there's 10 options for that, right? And when I go ahead and I multiply that, I'm going to see that I have 9,000 different seven-digit palindromic numbers that, that I can have. And again, I would encourage this because um, 
the ones who have 668 who have chatted to me are very determined on that. So I will simply say that if you have a statement in math and you want to say it's a fact and it's true, then you have to be able to explain very clearly all of the steps in such a way that anyone else can follow. Okay. So if you just have a formula that you're using, it's probably incorrect because really math is supposed to be simple, not complicated. And so if the formula is more complicated than the question, it's probably too much. Okay, Clayton, okay. go ahead. So um, it turns out I was using the wrong formula. There are 668 prime, um, like palindromes in seven go. digits. Yeah, so, so you're something a different, a, a much harder, was, awesome question, right? How many of them are prime? That's cool. Yeah. There's this wonderful thing called a calculator where I can put in all my formulas. Right, <laughs> but the problem, so so what, so just to, and I'm not um, saying like, aha, I'm for everyone to observe, right? This is a very good learning opportunity. Um, math is not about using formulas, it's about coming up with your own formulas, right? So keep that in mind in general, moving forward. And you know, you have gotten the right answer, just the right answer to a different problem. A much harder question. <laughs> I know that as a uh, that uh, when it comes to palindromic numbers, there's pattern and sequence to it. Yes. In order to form like a, a seven digit number that's palindromic, like one zero one zero one zero one. Yeah, well, and the, the alternative pattern is the one that Maria just exemplified, right? When, once you pick this number at the front, you automatically pick the one back here. And then you do that towards the middle. Once you hit the middle, that can be anything because it's in the middle, right? So very good. All right, guys. So here we're actually going to stop for today. Um, next Saturday, we're going to go ahead and continue with palindromic numbers and probably go into even harder problems and go into oh. different topics. Harder, I said. <laughs> Before you go, please type uh, in the chat your name and then by. And those of you who wanted to ask a couple things at the end, that's fine. But first, please go ahead and do that so we can take attendance. And thank you all for coming. I'm really glad to see a good turnout. Anyone had any questions or just want to share? Um, you said about the problem that we there like there was an option to do a minus when we were talking about finding a palindrome, yes, like as we yeah. subtract it. Some did it. In the chat. Yeah, I love it. It you was cut out. negative seven. Yeah, negative. You cut out a little bit. Seventy nine thousand four hundred and nine. Oh, I'll write it down. Okay, sounds good. But you managed to find one, that's cool. So um, Mr. Eubanks, so like uh, what type of math do you specialize in? Oh yes, so I'll wait till everyone has a chance to type by and then I'll type it in the chat. All right. But what, what I think will be a more helpful thing to tell you rather than what I'm, start I'll, I'll tell you what I'm starting to do. But to what made me switch to be a math major is actually formal logic. And I think the best thing I can say to capture your attention is this, if you want to prove that one plus one equals two, it is going to take you a little under 5,000 pages to do that. There's a proof for pretty much everything, right? Why is zero considered a number? There must be, there must be no, no, there must be proof that, that one plus one equals two takes 5,000 pages. Five, There's yeah. also a yeah. really, really simple explanation for that. Just a really, really simple proof, which is yeah. our number sequence is one, two, three. Oh, let and me stop. One right. and one is two. No, hold on. Let me stop you right there. <laughs> this go people forever. invented math. There you like go. We used cool. math and we invented our own numbers. But Clayton, you know Clayton. all the mathematicians would say. Yeah, Clayton, let me let me blow your mind. Math isn't science. Okay, it's very useful for science, but it's not science. And so what it is is, we want to have absolute certainty. So I have. You don't have to answer this now. This is something to think about, and it can make you understand how it could possibly be the case. That one plus one equals two takes that much work. So define to me what one is, but do so without pointing to anything in the world or assuming I know that I know anything else. So our human um like Already our human perception of the world is um already 
see, as soon as you bring in human perception, it's not good enough for math. It needs to hold beyond that. <laughs> yep, that, that's a uh, doctorate, PhD life. You have to think of the question and then and think of why this question and even go even further. For science, what you were about, the, the direction you were about to go, human perception, that's where science starts with that, right? You just assume everything is as it is. For math, that's not good enough. We're I mean, different. also a lot of physics isn't good enough. It's just like, um, right. it's just like, okay, is a particle here or there? And um, Schrodinger just goes out and says a particle is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. So it's like, Right, that's a whole other can of worms. So for, for uh, Hamza, I'm typing in the chat now the subject and then a person you should look up and the title of the text where he actually proves that one plus one equals two in volume two. Now it's the same name as Newton's Principia Mathematica, which is- I have heard of Bertrand Russell, but I really don't know a lot about him. Yeah, so you should look him up if this is interesting to you. So that's what got me into math. Now what I do, or what I'm starting to do, is called algebraic geometry. If you look that up, you will see words. <laughs> you will see funny pictures. Um, yeah, I barely understand it. By the oh, time he was, I yeah, it's there, yeah. On the on the Wikipedia page, it says that oh, he's a he's a lot. He's a polymath. He's a philosopher, logician, mathematician, historian, writer, social yep. critic, political activist, and noble lover. Mm -hmm a lot of you will find if you look up the names behind a lot of these mathematicians you'll find they're not just the stereotype of the person who sits in the corner with his stuffy math books or her stuffy math books and never talks to anyone never social a lot of them had very interesting lives and did some wild things so worth looking into um if you have a certain stereotype of what it means to be a mathematician isn't this the fact that uh math is a universal language same with music, I'm pretty sure. So, right. Uh, <laughs> most of the time, what you're saying is basically correct, that all cultures have math and it's a universal language. The person you're talking to is a artsy math person. And so what do you mean by universal language, right? Universal with respect um, to math, sure. Like, um, I know that math is used in music, of course, like for rhythm, um in time mm -hmm. but like what i mean by that i mean by like um can equations be used as a like a universal language like maybe to different life besides us like you know wait but maybe how do we know like extraterrestrial know about math or something yeah, yeah but really our symbols question. would be completely different from theirs. We can say one plus one, and they'd be like, what do you mean 3,500 square root of 5,300? Okay. Like, you never know. And Sam, what does aliens to contribute to math? <laughs> I'm confused on that part. I was just even saying that, like, about. maybe... You don't even have to think about aliens. Like, think about different languages, right? If we were talking about yeah. Chinese... Uh, in the Chinese language, they use symbols to represent sometimes not even just a letter, but like I O or you know oh, certain sounds, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and like, so and same like, idea. Well, what I meant another by good that, example, like equations or something yeah, right. like and that. And like another yeah. good example, not like, like answer. You know, like would be like Egyptian hieroglyphics. You know, they like represent so many, so many things. They may even represent numbers. Who knows? So you, this is this is great, uh, as you guys can all tell. There's no point at which this conversation could possibly end and feel natural. <laughs> I'm going to intentionally kind of stop. But this is great. This is precisely the type of things, not just as like mathematicians, but as scientists, as artists, as human beings. This is what you should do is you should be wondering things and digging deep. There's two ways to, to get complicated. And the way that most of you are more familiar with, I imagine, is learn more things, learn more theorems learn more facts and keep building up and up and up. But you know what's equally complicated? Pick things apart, dig deeper down, down, down and question why, where did this come from? Why is this true? How do I know this? Both of those are equally valid things to investigate, right? So again, we could talk forever, but I'm, I'm gonna shut up, <laughs> but this is, this is good. These are wonderful questions. 
And just so you all know, we did end the session. So if you're just here, you're here for fun, right? So you are free to leave if that's what you like to do. Um, we will be kick, uh, starting up again next Saturday. So if you're here, I'd love to hear more about you guys as to why you decided to join the math circle. Or maybe if you have any questions about UCF as a school, we'd love to answer those. I think everybody joined to like, you know, learn more. Yeah, the more you know. Is that, is that right, everyone? I mean, yes, much. that is true. I mean, the more I, you know. I joined because I like doing hard math problems and since we're just going over some stuff we learned last year, I figured might as well do this. And it's really fun to do math problems for me. Nice. I joined because I wanted to have opportunity in different things. Because opportunities actually lead you to success. That's true. Yes. Sometimes the best opportunities lead you to some, you know, you never know what that opportunity is. But sometimes it leads mm -hmm. you into something you never even thought about, which is just all you need <laughs> that is true <laughs> all right i mean like um a lot of people like charles schrodinger he was desperately trying to prove quantum physics completely wrong and while doing that he just completely unlocked like the other like maybe half or three quarters of quantum physics today so like yeah that's good and actually just on a more boring point that you oh he was trying to do something and the result was completely opposite we're bad about internalizing that and every time we do something wrong or that was not what was expected we think oh no i have screwed up well i i gotta tell you guys if you look at the history of math science art literature philosophy etc most of the big leaps forward are oops <laughs> and it's true in math too so again be brave it like try hard things look at confusing things and it's okay to be confused, right? Keep learning, keep working on things. Yeah, and sometimes you may even find that when you're solving for a problem in one area that actually may open up an interest in something else, right? So there's different, um, and you'll find that throughout, you know, when you guys, you know, leave middle school or even go to high school, there's gonna be, you know, different things to try out, different really cool courses you guys get to take to really see what you guys like. Maybe you didn't, you know, you find an area of science that you didn't know existed and, you know, maybe it has math in it too, right? And maybe you or get to, be able to explore that, right? In music, maybe you get to do some really cool music slash something else kind of class. You have to see what your school offers, but there's definitely a lot of opportunities to, for one, use math and for two, to really find something else. And a lot of these things connect and you may not think they do, they do. Isn't everything related to like just steam? Because it connects everything together. Science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So they it join all together. Equals life. It all equals life. I mean, I think beginning science beginning is probably existence. the broadest and best of those because science can be everything from, I don't know, like astrophysics to topology and that kind of stuff. Actually, like, math is also kind of everything because you kind of need math for everything in the world. That so is almost true. Almost everything. You can math. probably get by and find another way to compute. Yeah. But yeah. the term steam for life, um, there are um like different ways you can have a spiritual life but it's not connected to steam oh i disagree or, i disagree completely that's i disagree completely like um you see in a lot of religions um people will be like oh yeah god created the universe and he started time and space and stuff and everybody was just like haha that's stupid time and space has always been around 2000 years later we find out the big bang theory where time and space was created and now we have science that's actually contributing to religion. So who knows? I think it was also kind of math how, when it happened and when it decided to happen and how I mean, it happened. Who knows? It, well, it was actually a lot of probability because on a quantum level, when nothing, exi well, nothing exists, um, different particles Something. will pop in and out of existence just normally. And um, it just happened that like, 
18 quintillion of these particles all decided to pop into existence at the same point, and that created the Big Bang. Well, I mean, nothing is something. Well, th that's actually a, quant a question for quantum semantics, and it gets into really weird territory that is it's kind of like pseudo-reality, but... Same thing, if you're doing nothing, it's called doing something. It's called I mean, doing you're nothing. always doing something. I... Like you're existing, you're living. So you can't say that you're doing nothing. Yeah, you can never say that you're All doing right, I know nothing, this is a like debate just... that can go on forever, but let's oh, yeah, give I'm like, somebody I'm not, else I'm, a I chance to talk. Shut up if I join them. But this is amazing. <laughs> this is the perfect, yeah. Um, yeah I love the energy, not, guys. By the way, but I'm not going to join this. <laughs> But let's give, um, I know some of you are still on here. So if you guys want to go ahead and speak, I know if you haven't had a chance to, um, Jennifer, Brooke, is there anything you guys want to share with us? Just want to give you guys the opportunity to be able to speak since you're here. No? Very nice. Um, can oh. you write what you mean, Jennifer, by the regarding facts about us? Oh, you mean that, is that what, yeah, just anything, life, did you enjoy the session? Any complaints, criticisms? <laughs> yeah. Did you enjoy palindromes? Was it a fun um, thing to learn? I had a question. I actually have a question about palindromes. Go ahead. Could you possibly speak in palindrome, like how you have the word backwards, like you have it flipped around? Could you possibly speak that way? That's yeah. called gibberish. Probably. <laughs> it's gibberish. That's called oh, fake yeah. gibberish. Latin. Actually. No, that's called math gibberish. <laughs> no, it's called fake yes. pig Latin. Yes. Yes, pig this Latin. Is a, this is a poetic pe, poem. <laughs> no, actually, actually. Um, I am totally blanking on what it was, what it's called, and I don't want to say what culture because I might be wrong. But there is an old dead form of of poetry that does precisely that, where the entire purpose is that if you read it forwards and backwards, it sounds the same. This really depends on the language you're speaking, though. In English, this is incredibly awkward to do because we don't have many words that are pronounced in that way. Right. So you would have Can to I just see your outlook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I just looked it I'll up. It's reverse that. poetry. Yeah. Next Wait, time, is it I'll the same it thing? Is it the same thing if like you use humans, for example, me or Samuel, Clayton, Clayton, Samuel? Is it like could that also exist? Well, you want the sounds to be the same, right? So instead of Samuel, you would want Samuel Elumas, right? Because you'd want it to sound the same in terms of the, yeah. the auditory part of it, right? So in English, that's really awkward. So yeah. I think it's a different language that, that did this, but it's yeah, out of I this think... world. And if it doesn't exist, you should like try Mandarin to do it. might be able to do it. Yeah. I mean, I think Armon, it... wait. Um... Armand, were you here last year? Were you the person that specialized yeah, in like 18 was, languages? Yeah, he was there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm yeah. still waiting for you to learn the rest, but I'm yeah. just like, I swear, it's, I, it's remembered you from somewhere. Like, Yeah, I'm that language person, of course, because um, as you can see, there's mass. So you can say that I'm a geography expert or, yeah. So, I mean, um, but I am competing I, I in geography. Basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. I also have like if a bunch of books. If you paired up, you would books. be smarter than anything. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that. Um, but yeah, I just love learning languages. Uh, I have no idea why, but there's just like this, you know, it's, there's just there's just like energy I like want to learn more and I have no idea why but you know that's what my brain decides you know brains are curious in different ways so you know that's how we're built I'm just gonna say that right now but yeah that's that I'm almost as well, good as Armand I can speak Australian Canadian American and English 
get on my level. I can speak four languages. Wait, nice. Are you sure Wait. you can speak English? Have you heard some of the dialects in, in Britain? <laughs> yes, yeah, and I can speak French. Okay. <laughs> but I'm just going to um, say this right now. When you go to Australia, bear with me, I've been there. Um, you just want to, you know, hold tight, you know, just get a rosary maybe and just say, God, what are they saying? <laughs> just hold tight, get your tough? ostrich and your calamari and strap in for the ride. Is it that yeah. tough, though? Yes. I have no idea why, but, you know, it's unique, but I just can't barely, like, understand what they're saying because, like, they talk so fast. I have no idea why. And, and it's true because I have a sister that lives there. Yes. Mm-hmm. My friend. So, um, um, trying to, well, recreate the Australian accent by trying to do their own. And let's just say it sounds a little similar, but severely annoying. Was yeah, a success. but it is also um, a joke Australians make, and I know that because my sister is Australian and British, but she's now, she was in Australia like two months ago, but um, yeah, because her mom's Australian, so, um, but, but once again, she's my half-sister, so, um, but I consider her my sister because, you know, family's family. You don't have to get too detailed, scientific with family because if it's your family, then it's family. <laughs> Just um, simpler way to say Wait. that. So your family's from around the whole world? Um, I, I wouldn't say kind of around the. I wouldn't say around the whole world, but you know, mainly it, they're spread out because. Um, let's just say history happened and they got spread out everywhere. But they were all in one place, but, you know, events happened, and they're spread out like butterflies, just like that. So, exactly I just use butterflies as an example. I don't know. Technically, we all Is that because you have two maps in the back of your room and a globe? Yeah. Well, I mean, I have more maps, but um, they're all the way, like, up to my bed. But, yeah. My, my all right, guys, okay. we might have to cut it yeah. a little bit here. I yeah. love talking with you guys, but unless it's math related, we're probably going to end the session because a lot of us TAs, we got a lot of things to do today. So, But don't take that as like, oh, we, okay, we're tired. We want to go. No, no, <laughs> like, you know, you'll find out soon enough. Enjoy enjoy the free time. Right is, it okay? you know, is it okay if we ask math. for it's two plus two? <laughs> I'm sorry? <laughs> do I have to go prove that? I mean, I have to claim one. So... Well. <laughs> I mean, is maybe, okay maybe, maybe you can just like, um, you can maybe just like slightly plagiarize this paper and just replace the ones. <laughs> oh, so never, like never plagiarize. Never, never. <laughs> never. I never. Mean, definitely, yeah. And just like cite them at the bottom. Just like, this is not my paper. This is a paper from somebody else that I just replaced like four numbers with. I proved that two plus two equals four instead of one plus one equals two. So it's a ridiculous. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just... Just remember that when you're in the outside world, don't do no, no good things because no, no good things is, can lead you to be no, no dead. What does outside what the world mean? Like outer space? <laughs> All right, here we go. Like, We're talking don't about go outside things. and don't do bad things because if you do bad things, you will die and be dead. Well, nobody can go outside of the world. You can't. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, it's no, like around the world. Ah, uh, okay. What yeah, I meant, exactly. but like, around out, the like outside of the world. Okay, <laughs> this is awesome. It will happen again in a week. I, I hope to see all of you here again and we'll, we'll do more math. Um, and see and then, Yeah, so to the person who just asked if they can ask a question, yes. Um, if you, if, uh, if you wanna ask it now in direct message and it's private, that's fine. If you mean during the week in email, is that what you mean? Go ahead and clarify. See you guys next week. All right, see okay. you. See nice you meeting week. you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.